This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, welcome to yet another cataract vlog series where we look at this intumescent mature white cataract and I'll be demonstrating a horizontal chop technique in this patient. The side ports are made and the staining is being done under the air bubble. OVD is injected and I am planning the main incision. The patient is quite cooperative and this is being performed under topical anesthesia. So I am using dispersive OVD to deepen the chamber. The plan is to perform initial small rexes about 3 to 3.5 mm decompress the bag and then enlarge and make a secondary rexus. I am using the phaco tip to decompress the bag. I am trying to aspirate all the superficial cortex and epinucleus. The second instrument helps me in rotating the nucleus so that the equatorial swollen lens matter and sometimes the swollen lens matter which is behind the nucleus, everything loosens up and comes in front and it's important to have a very decompressed bag before we venture to perform the secondary rexis. Viscoelastic injection is done at the side not in the center to ensure that the viscoelastic does not go into the bag. A tangential cut is given using a micro scissors and then with the Dr. Haldipuka forceps the rexus is again enlarged to the desired one. So this is about 5-5.5 five, five mm and it's to be quite sufficient for this case. The nucleus is quite dense and I am creating the initial central pit by grooving. I am occluding it and then using the long Sinsky hook. I am engaging the equator of the nucleus and then pulling the dialer towards the phaco tip. This ensures a complete split of the nucleus. The tip is buried again and the tip is pulled towards me uh, so that I can see the equator quite well and then the sense cube just hooks around the equator and it scores the nucleus quite easily into the pieces. The same process is repeated. The quadrants which have been cracked are being emulsified and again care is taken that uh, the plane of emulsification is not very much close to the endothelium. So ensure that it is at the level of the capsular excess margin and also please note the position of the dialer it is obliquely placed over up and above the phaco tip so that uh, we minimize the chance of any quadrants flying out and hitting the conal endothelium. The remaining heminucleus is then being cut into many small fragments and then aspirated. This fragment shows a little bit of turbulence but consumed and now moving on to the last fragment. Please note the position of the chopper. It is kept in such a way that you know it acts like a barrier and prevents the fragments from flying out. One fragment does fly out and get stuck in the side port which is 
then released and aspirated. I'm flushing the poster capsule to clean up any of the lens fiber debris which are sticking onto it. Time to aspirate the cortex. You can just note the way the cannula is moved, you know. Once it engages the cortex, it moves tangentially first. And that is one way of ensuring that we don't put any stress on the zonules if at all the cortex is much more adherent to the capsule. So this tangential stripping of the cortex is a nice habit to develop. Uh, this ensures lesser chance of the port engaging the anterior capsule and also minimizes the risk of inducing stress to the zonules, especially in eyes with who have compromised zonular apparatus. Little bit of lens debris which is sticking onto the capsule is being flushed. Once it is done, I am inflating the bag with the OVD and a single piece hydrophobic lens is implanted into the bag. The OVD both in front and behind the lens is aspirated out. That was it, the case was completed, the side ports were hydrated. Hope you found this video helpful and thank you so much for watching.